Onsets and rhymes. This is sort of intermediate, advanced pharmacological awareness. Now, I say intermediate and advanced because we're going to be uh, working on a syllable level with words. And a lot of times, onsets and rhymes is done with single syllable words. But sometimes in doing onsets and rhymes, when we identify the onset in, in a single syllable word like pan, the beginning sound of that word, the sound that comes before the vowel is considered the onset. And the rest of that syllable, an, would be the rhyme. In bike, the initial, the initial sound in that syllable is b, and the rhyme would be the n sound, ike. So in onsets and rhymes, we're, we're usually looking at a single syllable word, and we're segmenting it into the initial sound that you hear before the vowel, and then the vowel and everything else. And the reason why this activity can be a little advanced uh, is because when we do onset and rhyme with words like cow, fox, hit, when I identify the initial sound before the vowel, we're actually isolating a phony. If I say cut in cow, fu in fox, ha in hit, I'm isolating that phony. Now, I, I may not be intentionally doing it, but we are doing it. When we, when we segment this word into its onset and rhyme, we're identifying the initial sound in the words and the rhyme. So in this way here, it's going into the phonemic awareness zone, sometimes, not always. Like for example, when we think about onsets and rhyme here, yeah, segmenting this into onset and rhyme, these are all uh, initial sounds, right? Initial phonemes. The onset is, an, is a one, is a phoneme, one phoneme. But then when we get to uh, segmenting these into onsets and rhymes, you see the fl and the, and the splat and the strut and the street, these are all blends and blends these like the, the, the spla in splat. That is the onset, but it is an onset that's made up of three distinct sounds. It's a blend that has three sounds, a cluster. Spla. So if a child were to um, break down a splat into an onset and rhyme or stale into an onset and rhyme, and they were like spla, splat, st, stale, uh, they are they are breaking into onset and rhyme, but they're not going that extra distance of going like uh, s, p, l. So so this activity as it stands, if you ever have something where you're a child is asked to break up the initial sound before a vowel of a word, like I'll give you an example here. If we ever saw like gr, ape, they're breaking up the initial sound that comes before the vowel sound of a single syllable word, then this would be associated with onset and rhyme. Okay, can you remember that? It's, it's good to have that in the back of your head team because you know what? If you ever saw an activity involving taking a word, segmenting it orally into its initial sound before the vowel, and then the end sound after the vowel and after, that would be an onset and rhyme activity. Let's look at our first question in the set. Take a moment now. Give you one minute, read it to yourself. Go, one minute to yourself. And stop. You know, I can't tell uh, if you're doing the reading or not, but uh, I'll, I'll do this one. It's not a very hard one, you know. Um, I'll read it real quick. Uh, I always, uh, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna just show you my thought process, but as I read, a kindergarten teacher, I see the grade. So right away, in my mind, I'm like, okay, uh, it's a sound thing. Maybe it's a print thing. That's just how my mind works. Now, it could be other things too, but those are like the first go-tos, right? Okay. Um, like I have two, like uh, um, we have two, I have two kids. And uh, when something is uh, broken in the house <laughs> or destroyed, <laughs> it's like, it's either A or it's either B. Now, of course, it could be C, D, or E, or, or but but you you have like go tos, and these are my go tos. Okay, a kindergarten teacher asks a small group of students to repeat after her. First, she says the word grape, and then pronounces it as gra, and then ape. Next, she says the word take, and then pronounces it as t take. This activity is likely to promote the students' phonemic awareness primarily by, so it's that advanced phonologic, advanced intermediate phonological awareness. So it's, it could be 
it's, I wouldn't say phonemic awareness, but it's advanced phonological awareness, or it's sort of that intermediate advanced level. We can see that this is a sound activity by how, by the words, the teacher um, is asking and repeating and saying and pronouncing. See all this, this language here? This is all language of an activity that's a sound activity. It's an oral language sound activity. So it's not a print. There's no print being used here. So any of the answer choices like uh, uh, like D here, anything with letters uh, would be out. Now D is referencing letter sound correspondence, right? So whenever we do letter sound correspondence, that's actually a phonics thing or maybe early alphabetical principle, but it's, it's not what we're doing because this is a pure sound thing. And we're, um, we're not, uh, this activity, hopefully you've recognized it, right? You recognize that, hey, this activity with the word great, you said to yourself, you know what? I know my friend. When you do that with a word like great, great, that is an automatic onset and rhyme thing. Who did that? Maybe you did that in less than 30 seconds. Maybe you're like 30 second question, maybe? Possibly, I think so. I think in reading this, you should be able to spot your friend. I mean, if you walk into a coffee shop, right? I mean, I should be able to spot my friend, hopefully. I, you don't want to be the person in the coffee shop that's like, uh, where are you? I'm right in front of you. No, you don't want to, you don't, you want to be like, go into the coffee shop and there's four people in the coffee shop and you spot your friend, right? <laughs> yes? Well, that's what we have here. We have a coffee shop with four people in it. And this coffee shop has the scenario gra eight, and you look for your friend. Okay, so this is out, this is right. Consonants and vowels is out, it's involving letters, right? We're not doing a letter activity. Um, consonants and vowels would fall under alphabet and, and naming, naming letters, and it would be a print awareness activity. We're not doing that, okay? Um, recognizing uh, distinct syllables in oral language. Now that is a sound thing, yes, but it's not the activity that we're doing. Clapping the syllables in a name, wonder, or in a word, wonderful, that would work, but that's not the right friend, yes? We're looking for a different friend. We're looking for our friend on set and rhyme in this question. So the answer team, let me clear all this off. The answer is B. And hopefully you spotted your friend right away. Okay. Okay. Let's look at the answers. The ant. This comes from that test. There is good test to take a look at, and uh, it reviews some of this vocab like onset, rhyme, let uh, anything involving consonants and letters is a is a print thing. Letter sound correspondence is a phonics thing. When we talk about letter sound correspondence, that is literally the definition of phonics. Phonics is letter sound correspondence. So just good to review the vocab, okay? All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going.